Hello and welcome to this video on the European standard on electronic invoicing. The e-invoicing directive calls for the definition of a common European standard on electronic invoicing. The directive dictates that member states shall adopt it so that it will become mandatory for all contracting authorities and contracting entities to receive and process e-invoices complying with the European standard. This video will explain three important components of the e-invoicing standard, the core, the science, and extensions. To do this, we'll have a look at a couple of examples. Maria works for the central government and is responsible for procurement. She buys phone services from Lucy, who works for a phone service company. Maria and Lucy take on the role of buyer and seller in this scenario. Likewise, we have Dimitri, working for a public hospital, and Bernard, a food manufacturer. They too exchange goods and services in the role of buyer and seller. Both buyers request goods or services in large quantities and have a long-term relationship with the sellers. Both buyers receive an electronic invoice. Now when comparing the invoices, we see many similarities, but there are some differences. In the invoice that Lucy sends to Maria, we find the name and address of both buyer and seller, a description of the service, the invoice amounts, and phone usage information. On the invoice that Bernard sends to Dimitri, we also find the name and address of both buyer and seller, a description of the service, the invoice amounts, but we also find something called the product batch information. Now imagine if Dimitri buys the phone service from Lucy and receives Lucy's invoice. Dimitri cannot properly process the invoice as his computer was expecting to receive the product batch information but instead it got the phone usage information field and hence cannot process it. To process the invoices correctly, it takes a technician to adjust the invoice processing system, costing both time and money to his public administration. Now many public administrations face this challenge, especially in an economic environment that is globalizing at a rapid pace. Now the European Commission is removing this barrier by introducing the European standard on electronic invoicing. The team charged with developing the European standard identified the information that is used in most invoices and based on this specified what we call the core invoice. Some of the core information is mandatory in all invoices but some of it is optional and is included only when necessary. In all cases if both seller and buyer conform to the European standard the seller will know that if he sends the information the buyer will be able to process it correctly. Now Lucy knows that her invoice will be processed correctly, not only by Maria, but also by Dimitri and any other public administration that follows the European standard. The standard recognizes that the core may not suit all invoice exchanges. For some there may be too much information, while others may want additional information. There are thus two distinct variations that can apply. Let's examine the first one in the following scenario in which options are being removed. Some information elements in the core invoice allow for options. For example, in regard to payment instructions, the core allows for multiple payment options, including a SEPA credit transfer, non-SEPA credit transfer, direct debit, or the element can be left empty, since in some cases the payment method is defined in the contract. Now let's suppose Dimitri needs to limit these options to only allow SEPA credit transfers to ensure that he conforms with some legislation. This means that Dimitri implements a restricted version of the standard that has been made available for those who fall under this legislation. The standard calls this a Core Invoice Usage Specification, or a SIAS for short. Because this SIAS is using just one of the options provided by the Core, the SIAS falls within the European standard and therefore Dimitri is fully compliant. The invoice can be processed by anyone that supports the standard without restrictions. However, even though sciences comply with the European norm, they may still challenge interoperability. In our example, Maria supports the full core invoice without restrictions and Lucy always uses non-SEPA credit transfer as a payment option in her invoices. She can send her invoice to Maria, who can process it without an issue but when sending to Dimitri, she must adjust her invoice to Dimitri's size. To limit such conflicts and reduce the need for adjustment, 
it's advised that buyers are able to receive the full core invoice or adopt common sizes that are widely used. In the following scenario, we'll take a look at the other variation on the European norm, where information is added. Maria receives phone information from Lucy, and she wants all phone service companies to send her this information. For this, she may implement a sectorial extension that may have been developed for the phone service industry sector, where this extra business term is added into the invoice specification and then ask all phone service companies to provide her this information by supporting the extension. This variation is called an extension in the European standard. To use an extension, there must be a bilateral agreement between the buyer and the seller. Now Lucy and Maria can continue doing business as before and Maria can receive the phone information from other phone suppliers who are willing to support the extension. But because the invoice is not following the core anymore, these extended invoices will not be processed by Lucy's other buyers who only accept the standard without extensions. Because extended invoices require bilateral agreements, they fall outside of the European norm. Therefore, everyone must support the core or a SIAS to comply with the standard, even though they may also use extended invoice by agreement with certain business partners. Thank you for watching. Alongside this video, CEF e-invoicing offers a free service package that gets you started with e-invoicing in public procurement and helps you comply with the European standard and its specifications. It includes services, documentation and tools. Come and check them out on CEF Digital and let's connect Europe together.